Hi, this is Kathy from Easy Sunday Club, and today I'm going to do a watercolor tutorial of these three dragonflies. This is in a loose and organic watercolor painting style. It doesn't take very long to do, and uh, I thought it might be a good introduction for those of you who want to learn more uh, into the wet on wet technique, but have already had a little bit of experience uh, with watercolor before. So originally I had the pencil sketch recorded, but unfortunately I lost that part of the video, so we're gonna jump straight into the painting part. But uh, these dragonflies have very simple shapes, so they're relatively easy to sketch. And like I said, this is for kind of an advanced beginner level so hopefully you can sketch these out and join me for the painting part it's a super fun wet on wet technique that i think you'll enjoy very much so i'll start with the top dragonfly uh, painting something like this does require a little bit of planning uh, because i'll be using a lot of wet on wet technique and a little bit of dry on wet as well or no wet on dry <laughs> technique but uh, you'll see how they they kind of interact together and how they bring different texture and flavors to a painting. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm taking this size 8 brush and I am going to just wet the top wing. I'm not trying to oh, color within the lines. You can see there's some pencil marks there, but I'm just wetting the general area because like I said, I'm, I'm keeping this painting very loose. So now I'm loading my brush with some paint. This is a, a dark teal color. And I'm just dropping the paint in like this. You see how with so much water, uh, the paint just blooms like very quickly to where the water goes or where there's water. I'm doing that to this side as well. And if you want the paint to go further, you can just keep dabbling, dabbling to uh, where the beginning of kind of like at the start of this area. Don't go there because then you'll have you know, higher value paint here. And what I want to do is for the paint to flow organically here so that I could create these nice, uh, nice blooms. And here I just wanted to kind of wanted to smooth out the edges a little bit. And now traveling down, I wanted to use a little bit of purple crimson, so I am going to just apply it directly onto the wet teal paint and bring it down here. Keep in mind the paper here is dry, so the, the paint isn't flowing anywhere, just sitting on top of the paper. Um, but like I said, I like mixing wet on wet with wet on dry to create um, good contrast. And uh, I feel like my brush was a little too wet, so I'm cleaning it up a bit. I don't know if you can see here. Cleaning up a bit and then removing excess water. And going back in. And here I while the paint's still dry, I'm dragging it over. So this is another wet on wet technique. Earlier, I just dropped the paint into water. Here, I apply the paint first and using a clean brush, I'm dragging the color outwards. So it has a, the same effect, but I'm using a different technique to get to it. And while this paint is still wet, I am going to take a second brush, which is a smaller size two brush, and I'm loading it with dark color, with the black watercolor, and I'm going to add it in. Oh, so I wanted to emphasize that for this brush, I'm not loading a whole lot of water. And if anything, I have more paint than water on this brush, right? It is a thin brush, so the belly is not holding a lot of water. So when I apply this paint, on the paper, on dry paper, it almost has a uh, like a calligraphy brush type of feel to it. So it's not spreading anywhere. Even though it's it's touched the wet part of the painting already, it's not you know it's not mudding up the the teal area. 
because while I want it to blend with the teal, I don't want it to take over because you no, know, this is just the middle part of the, the dragonfly. And the bottom part here, I actually want it to, it to be more wet because I want this part, it's, this is one of my favorite effects of watercolor that often looks accidental, but also is often intentional, is that I wanted the tip of the black here of the top dragonfly to bloom into the body, the wing of the second. So in order to do that, time is of the essence. And what I'm doing is taking a wet brush. I'm loading a bit more water this time, loading the black, and I am going upwards so that the wettest part is on the paper already. And while the paper, while it's very wet, I'm taking the same brush, cleaning it off, and I am going to add another color paint. This is a cadmium red, and I'm loading a ton of as much paint as I can to this brush, and I'm just slowly just touching the tip of the black. So you can see now it's led onto the wing of the second dragonfly. And again, you don't want it to look too muddy, so I clean off the brush, and now I'm just dragging the paint down. It barely has any cadmium red at this point, and that is totally okay, because I just want that tip to have this nice blending effect between the first and the second dragonfly. Now I'll slowly add in more of cadmium red onto the part of the wing that's still wet. And continue to keep it very loose. I'm gonna do the same thing as the last one and just wetting the area and dropping the paint in. Giving it a little help there. So now, do I want to make this somewhat even and make the tip of this wing black? Yeah, I think I'll do that. Just as there's nothing here, I'll have to create it myself. So I'll add a little black here to the tip till it catches the rest of the wing. And cleaning off the brush, I'm just very gently letting it flow into the rest of the wing. I think I like that now. I'm gonna let it dry before I do anything to it. And now I'm taking, going back to the bigger brush and going to add some teal again. Actually, I think for the middle butterfly, I'm gonna do a yellow. So I'll stick to four colors here. I take that back. <laughs> do the crimson for this one as well. So for the crimson, um, I'm doing a dry, a wet on dry technique at the bottom, which means it has very defined edges since there isn't any water. So it just stops where the brush stops. And I can try to drag it out more, but I'm thinking I don't want the whole wing to be colored or to be painted. At this point, I'm happy with how this butterfly is and wanted to move on to the next one. Uh, I think this might be a little too wet to apply the body, but maybe using the same dry on dry technique, it should be okay. So now I'm taking the smaller brush again, loading it with black, and slowly coloring in. Because I'm using a smaller brush, that's another thing too, it's not going to, because it doesn't hold as much water just by nature, it's not going to bleed too much of the black over. So even if you're covering a larger area, it helps to use a smaller brush, at least around the edges, if you want like a partial blending effect, but not too crazy, not too much blending. I 
And for this one, I actually wanted to add a bit of green in the body to kind of tie the first couple of paintings together. So there's like a hint of green or teal. And this tail is not, um, it doesn't overlap or touch the third dragonfly, so I'm not worried about timing it correctly and getting to the next wing. I forgot to add the antenna of the dragonfly. I'm just adding two. Not a huge fan of, not a fan at all of insects, but I do love dragonflies and butterflies. Oh, and ladybugs. But most of the time, not a fan of insects. These are pretty fun to paint though. Okay, so I think this tail needs a little more love. Um, adding a bit more here. All right, and for next one, I am for this butterfly, I, why do I keep saying butterfly? Uh, for this dragonfly, I'm going to do a yellow top wing, no, a cadmium red top wing and a teal bottom wing. So we have you know, three main colors in circulation on rotation and then I may add some accent colors later. This is where I say these aren't supposed to be scientifically correct. I'm not illustrating these for Science Magazine or anything. So with this plot, this one, really anything goes. Um, I can try to start with the body just to show you a different approach. So start with the body. wet. Oh, it is wet. <laughs> now I'm taking a bigger brush and what did I say? The bottom wing is a teal color. So I am doing uh, dry on wet for this one. So I'm pulling the paint outwards and pulling the paint outwards to the left. And I'm also starting from the corner. I'm doing a, I'm going to wet the corners, not too much water, although I feel like I applied more than I wanted already. I want to just make it damp than wet. And now I am uh, going to add a little bit of forest green to my original teal color, teal paint. And I'm dropping it into the corner. Yeah, I think I like this. Dark forest green color for this bottom dragonfly. And be a little more bold and just carry it over. And you want a little bit on top. So next, what I said I'm going to do cadmium red for the top wing. Like this. the top wing. And 
and maybe a little more wet on wet action around here. You see how I'm dragging it out and it, that cauliflower? Oh, well, this is not quite cauliflower. It's it's a, this organic bloom was something that I didn't really expect, but I really like it. And I want the cadmium red to be of a greater value, so I want it to be a bit more intense and vibrant. And this time I also want to add a bit of accent color. I want this to be a happy, uh, cheerful palette. So I am adding some yellow ochre to the cadmium red. Just a teeny bit. This one is in the corner. See, sometimes I am a little too generous with the water usage, but that's okay. That's why you want to get you want to get thicker watercolor paper, and that's kind of the point of watercolor paper is that they are thick and can hold a lot of water. So I always use at least 140 pounds. I almost always use 140 pounds, pound watercolor paper, and I almost always use cold press. I tried hot press a few times, and I just didn't love it, at least not for the subjects that I usually paint, which are animals and plants sometimes. Now I'm thinking I want some yellow up here too because this is looking a little too bright. And I know everything's dried up here already, but that's okay. Just adding a little yellow up here. Just a hint. And I want a bit more accent here too. Another thing I'm going to do to tie all the butterfly, ugh, <laughs> dragonfly, I need to stop saying butterfly, together at the end is, uh, I'm gonna go over it with dark, uh, with black, very thin black outline, but not like coloring book outline. <laughs> it's a very organic, dry brushing style outline. Just to tie all the shapes together. But I first need to make sure that everything is dried and that I am done with the coloring part, or the painting part of this piece. And I think this tail needs a little more help here. So I'm gonna do that. And maybe a little, add a bit of forest green down here too. Right here, and this yellow ochre after it dries definitely lighten up quite a bit. So wanted to add a bit more, and this crimson also needs a bit more hue. point um I should just leave this alone because I do like how this is turning out but I don't want to ruin it so I think any more detail would just lose the lightness the levity of these dragonflies so I will wait for it to dry and apply the last coat okay looks like most of the butterflies dried uh, so the last thing I'm gonna do to make the painting pop a little more is I am taking a very thin, again, you want the bristle to be long rather than this shorter bristle because this allows, for some reason it feels counterintuitive, but having a long bristle actually allows for thinner stroke, like very delicate and thin stroke as well as wider stroke if you push it down more. But in this case, we want a long bristle brush. It's a size one liner it's actually a liner brush and i am using ink as a bombay black 
India ink. Kind of. I'm being very delicate here. Just because I might not have waited long enough for all the paint to dry, but whatever. I think that's part of, part of the beautiful accidents that watercolor creates. So, again, being very gentle with it. And right here too, kind of. And because the bristle is long, you can vary between a thicker line and a thinner line, right? It's just like brush calligraphy. Like if you have, you can have a thicker downstroke. I don't know that much about brush calligraphy. You can have thicker stroke and lighter stroke, thinner stroke in the same stroke. Uh, I don't know what it's called, but on the dragonfly wing, there's these you know, really pretty webbing when you look through them. So I don't want to fill it in all the way, but just I just want to kind of lightly apply it. And because I'm using ink here, the black is going to be the blackest black. So if I wanted to, to um, add some blacker accent to the body of the dragonfly, that is totally fine. You may not see it as well on through in the video, but I can see that it helps to further define the body. To the last one. And this part takes some confidence, I think, just because this black ink is permanent. I mean, you can't take it off of the paper, even if you wet it, do whatever. And it's not like other painting mediums where you can cover it with different another color paint. It just doesn't work that way. So it does take confidence, but at the end of the wet day, it's a piece of paper. You can start over. Your life is not over, your creative career or hobby or endeavor is not over. Just dust yourself off and try again. You see this corner here, it kind of cauliflowered a bit. Um, I, I will go into more detail in another video, but in this case, I like it. Some people don't really don't like the cauliflower effect, but I do. I think it's part of the charm of watercolor. I see now it's pretty good. I'm deciding if I want to add more color accents to the middle dragonfly, but I really don't think it's necessary, so. Yeah, I think I'm gonna call it. 
So if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more of these uh, watercolor tutorials, let me know. And I hope you enjoy this one.